Hey you guys, what's up? It's the movie retrospective, and we're to we're doing found footage today, motherfucker. <laughs> Which is not a genre I'm a big fan of, although I do actually still like this movie. Although I will say that I kind of feel like I appreciated it more back at the time that it came out uh, because the found footage genre hadn't been so is wasn't so ubiquitous. And I really, really liked the sort of genius of the marketing behind it. They really kind of got in at exactly the right time for this to just like blow up and be like a huge cultural phenomenon, which is something I kind of want to talk about because I, I find that like really, really interesting. So now you had never seen this before. No, I never saw it. But I do remember people talking about it. Yeah, it was a big, um, it was a big deal. They were talking deal. about it before it came out. Yeah. And there was some confusion of whether or not it was like a real paranormal case they were talking about, or if it was some kind of movie coming. You'd hear you you would hear conflicting things. And when the movie came out, some people were still kind of confused of whether or not it was real. And kind of like the damn Discovery Channel mermaid fucking documentary. Although I'm pretty sure nobody but your dad thought <laughs> that dad was real. <laughs> they mermaid, had pictures of it. Mermaids are real. I got them scientists on there. They're talking about science. He missed the whole science. the whole Blair Witch kind of thing that happened yeah. because it's like in in the post Blair Witch world, like nobody's gonna fall for that anymore. Yeah. Um. You know what I mean? And I don't. And people didn't. Not everybody fell for it back then either. Uh, it was probably, I don't know if it was like half and half, but a lot of people did kind of go in going, is this real? Because I will say that the two guys that directed this, who were actually, uh, were film students at the University of Central Florida, uh, not far from here. Their names are Daniel Myrick and Eduardo Sanchez. And they were kind of like, like I said, they got into this like right at the exact right time. And they knew exactly how to market it yeah. to make it to just kind of introduce enough ambiguity that some people would be like, Hey, maybe this, maybe these people did go in the woods making a documentary and then they disappeared and this is their footage. And honestly, as, um, kind of like fucked up the editing is and how like uh, low fi the picture is and the sound and, you know, they used kind of like amateurish equipment. I kind of feel like found footage movies nowadays, they want to get that aesthetic, but they use like kind of fancier shit. So it's almost kind of like fake. This isn't fake. I mean, they actually did it like really, really cheap. And I think in a way that kind of contributes to why people thought that maybe there was a possibility that it was real. I think they did a really, really good job you know, blurring that line between this shit really happened and it's a movie. You know what I'm well, saying? I remember, you know, um, uh, you know, like my little friends and shit, little Melissa and, and, and it did down past Christian, these little goth girls, me and my first wife would hang out with. And, uh, you know, they called them little goth girls. We were all young then when this came out and they knew it was a movie that was coming, but they were, thought that maybe the movie was based on something that really happened, you know, that there might have been something to, like it was based on a paranormal case. Right. Kind of like, but we, they hadn't seen it yet. Yeah. They just knew that it was coming. And they thought it was going to be something kind of like Amityville Horror, where it was supposedly based on something that happened. That's what, the, that's that was the, the idea. But it had like a, like you said, it had an online ca advertising campaign behind it. And it was uh, kind of like, remember those fake crime, uh, f fake fucking crime investigations that would be online where you're reading this thing and you could, you're sure that this is an actual real crime that happened, but it was yeah. actually a fake? What'd they call that? Well, this is kind of like, and I was going to say, too, this almost is kind of like an ARG. Like what ARG, people, that's what I was What saying. people would call an er, alternate reality game, if yeah, you know ARG, that's it. Yeah, when this thing appeared, it was kind of like the first ARGs. It was kind of like an ARG. Yeah, that, and, that's and, pretty much exactly what this is, where, right. where everything uh, that they did about it was engineered to make this look like a real thing. Yeah. Um, they basically, I mean, and they did, they thought of, like, some shit that nowadays is kind of like, you know, everybody knows that. But, but back, back then, then, in yeah, 1999, yeah. this yeah. was very, I mean, even, look, 1999, for context, 
YouTube wouldn't start for another six years. Yeah. YouTube didn't start till 2005. So this was way before that. Like a lot of people were online, but not everybody was. It no. was still very, very much in its infancy. We had forums and discussion groups. And shit. Right. Chat rooms. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And there were websites because we like websites, I said, yeah. before this movie came out, what the two, what the guys did was they set up a website that made it look like you know, the Blair Witch Project, you know, the Blair Witch thing was a real legend, which it's not. They just yeah. made it up. Um, it's based in, it's a real town, like Burkittsville, Maryland is a real town. But they based it around that, and um, then they had a thing where the actors uh, who they had come in, who used their real names in the movie, they basically had to, I believe they had to sign a contract that said, you know, for a year, you can't really, like, after the movie comes out, you can't, like be really seen in public. You can't be in another movie. You can't do all this other stuff because they were trying to maintain the illusion that these people were actually missing. Uh, so, honestly, I was watching something today about it, and I don't know if this is true or not, but this is on the IMDb uh, trivia page. They said that Heather Donahue, that her mom got like sympathy cards from people thinking like thinking that her daughter was really missing or really dead because they put up that was one of the things and that was one of the kind of viral marketing things that they did was they had this missing poster with yeah. all three of their faces on it with their actual names their actual yeah. height their actual weight and they gave them out to people and it would lead you to this website that had like all this investigation and it had stuff about like it had fake interviews of people it had fake police reports it had the whole thing so they went all fucking out yeah. uh to make this and I think like I said it was really a genius move and I think yeah. that that was one of the things that I, just made this become like a huge you reminded me more about it I remember Melissa and Michelle would be talking about this we'd be hanging out up at Melissa's house and she lived in this little old witch's shack she looked like a witch look a little cute little gothic witch type chick and she was talking about this and um, she was getting it confused with um, the bell witch the right. legend of the Bell Witch. Which is a real legend. That is a real legend. From Tennessee. And she was telling me about it, and I was getting kind of confused between the two. I thought that maybe the Blair Witch was the Bell Witch, just kind of, you know, the just in a different, different state. word for it. And I was, I, at that time, I had read about the Bell Witch, and I thought it was based upon a poltergeist case. Knowing more about the case, that case is not as old as they claim it is. It's not as, no. it, it, it's, it, it, it's an anachronism in certain ways. So I kind of thought, I remember she was telling me about it, and I was like, they, you know, and I was like, yeah, but that didn't happen in the case. That case stopped, you know, and I, I thought I knew more about the Bell Witch than I actually did in 99. You know, this is before you could, there, you couldn't really even research off online. Yeah, not really. Like I said, there I think. There wasn't a lot on the internet. I think that's that. kind of what helped. Yeah. Like, kind of push this movie into these massive, I mean, the thing about it, this movie cost pre-production filming edit like not editing but like uh cost like sixty thousand dollars and then maybe another uh bunch in marketing but it came in under a million dollars easily i think it was only it was a half a million altogether that was with marketing this movie made 250 million dollars yeah which is a lot so of money. i mean and they it's funny because the two guys that did it like i said they just you know they just came out of film school they had the idea back in 1993. They said, "Oh, let's like make up this witch legend, yeah. and then we'll make a movie. We'll we'll like use this kind of cheap ass, you know, the the stuff that we have because we don't have a lot of money. We'll have these people go out in the woods and we'll do like a mockumentary type thing." And they were just they weren't really aiming that high. They basically said, "Well, we wanted to do this kind of thing, and maybe we thought it would get on cable." Uh, they didn't even they weren't really even seeing a theatrical release. Uh, they did actually, uh, they sent it to Sundance and, uh, you know, the Sundance Film Festival after they were done editing it. And it was such a big hit at Sundance that Artisan Studios bought the rights for a million or whatever. And then, like, in 1999, in the summer, they rolled it out. And they, the first two weeks, it just played, like, limited. But it was such a massive word-of-mouth hit that in, then it went wide and then it just went all over. I was, like, I think, I don't know if this uh, record has probably been, uh, you know, surpassed by now. But at the time, in Italy, it was the biggest opening uh, U.S. film ever, like, in their history. Hmm. Now, so, let me ask you this. I remember that I remember that Michelle knew about this story, this Blair Witch story, before the movie was even out. So she must have had been she must have been seeing stuff online because she said yeah. she mentioned a documentary. There was. It. It's so called it was, 
A documentary. There's about a it? Mo- there's a mockumentary. Okay. It's called Curse of the Blair Witch. Okay. So they showed it on the Sci-Fi Channel. Okay. And uh, it must it's, have been online too. Yeah. And I and okay. like I said, there was a whole website, a dedicated website, and everything was there to maintain the illusion that this okay. was a real thing. That's what so they got. did actually do a mockumentary, which right. I think I saw like back in the day. I don't remember if I saw it before or after that I saw the movie. Okay. Because I saw the movie in the theater. So it was effective. Yes. She was believing it. Yes. She was believing it. It was very well done. Yeah. And I will say, too, that I think the reason this movie... And like I said, I, I saw it in the theater. I think seeing it in the theater, I didn't... I didn't really believe it was real. Like, I didn't really have a feeling about it one way or the other. Um, I, it was just a horror movie, and, you know, I was like, yeah, let's go see it. Uh, you know, a lot of horror movies came out that year. Sixth Sense came out uh, right around the same time. Uh, Stir of Echoes came out right around the same time. So I was, like, seeing a lot of horror movies. So I saw it in the theater. Uh, didn't really know if it was real or not. I was like, doesn't matter. I just, you know, I like horror movies. So I went to see it. I will say that seeing it in the theater is a lot creepier experience because you're kind of in there with like a bunch of people and when we watch it because we watched it on amazon prime and when you're in your house unless you have like a really really good sound system unless every like every sound in your house is completely quiet you miss a lot of the real subtle you know what i mean because sometimes there's scenes where they're like in the tent and they're just you know, like what's that what's that and like you can't really hear it all that well in the theater you could hear it a lot better like you could hear like people walking around in the woods like behind their tent and shit like that you can't hear it as well at home uh unless you i mean we have a decent sound system but i still couldn't hear it that well because there was like other noises and stuff but so i will say and seeing it with a group of people um is definitely better like in this pitch black kind of thing with no distractions was like much scarier Rewatching it at home it's not really scary but i can see i mean i really like the restraint that they showed they wanted everything to be as realistic as possible the two guys they said well we wanted to do something like they were big into like in search of and like par- they said well the reason we wanted to do this was because we thought shit like in search of or like paranormal documentaries were scarier than horror movies yeah and yeah so it's like so we wanted to do something like that but that was completely realistic um and and also something where you know they they citing movies like you know jaws and stuff like that where you don't really see the monster all that much because you know what you don't see is like scarier than what you do see now i know that a lot of people complained uh, you know, even at the time, I kind of remember people complaining because I liked this movie at the time. I just, you know, but people did piss and moan. They were like, well, you know, you didn't see anything. There was no Blair Witch. There was no nothing. There is actually a little trivial fact about this where, you know, the scene where, uh, you know, Heather and them like run out of the tent, like in the dark and they're like running through the woods and she's like, what the fuck is that? What the fuck is that? The, right there. There was somebody standing over, like, to the left, like, in a creepy, who was supposed to be, like, the witch. It was supposed to look like a ghost, like, floating. And whoever was holding the camera was supposed to pan to the left, but they forgot, Mm -hmm. and they never had a chance to reshoot it. So they actually were supposed to show the witch very briefly, uh, but they didn't get the shot, so they never put it in there. And I just thought that was like kind of funny. It was like, so the witch actually was kind of supposed to be in there, but they just didn't yeah. get around to it. I enjoyed the movie for certain reasons and didn't enjoy it for others. I mean, I enjoyed it. I thought it was a damn time capsule. You know, seeing those old cars and the yeah. old clothes and uh, the the lingo, fucking how young people spoke back then and how cute girls were still kind of wearing mom jeans a lot of them yeah i forgot about that there's a lot of shit now the get. footage even though this movie came out in 1999 and they shot it in it's supposed to be 97 it's supposed to be 94 okay because right. because Makes obviously you're supposed to you're supposed to be like oh we before. found this footage like yeah. these people these three people disappeared yeah. and they've been di- they've been gone for a year 94 or two was the heyday of mom jeans yeah yeah, yeah. but they were yeah. still running around in 97 98 99 there were some people that were still out of it they were, they were wearing those yeah um um, it was uh, other than that uh, I was kind of going in and out of the movie sometimes I'd just kind of my mind would start wandering it's just not that interesting sometimes I'd focus in on it like you know they're interviewing the guys who were fishing they were they were funny they're, they're, certain characters will kind of draw you in it's, it's not a it's not a it's not a cinema style feeling at all so it doesn't feel like you're watching a movie but I th- but that's what so, they yeah, wanted. They wanted they it wanted. to look exactly like right. someone's footage that they found right. in the woods. But when they do that, it's kind of strains your attention span. Yeah, I get that. Mean, so that's that's why. 
Um, and then, like, um, uh, another thing I didn't really like about it is it got very screamy in certain yeah. pl places. It overly screamy. And the girl got more scared than people actually do get scared. If you actually scare somebody, they usually just freeze. They can't as accept that, you know what I mean, that something bad's going to happen. Most people don't really show that much emotion when they're fucking real frightened. Um, you know, if you can, I've seen people die and watched them die. And they don't really show a whole lot of damn fear. Um, it's just uh, like they go out of body. They can't believe it's happening. It's that kind of stuff. So, I saw a damn poltergeist. It scared the shit out of me. And I wasn't acting like that. And I was a kid. But I was oh, freaked the fuck out. I mean, everybody You tend to go inward, not outward. You're like, whoa. You could I mean, everybody's down. different, too. I mean, I have seen yeah. people, like, completely flip out and lose their shit. And I will well, say... I've done that in that time, but it doesn't... It wears off real fast. Yeah. You know what I mean? It's kind of like you reach overload and you go, whoa. And then after that, you just kind of shut down more than fucking... You know what I mean? You're like, whoa. You go inward. It's so... Some of it is obviously acting, you know? Although, that said, I will say that everybody in this, like the main three actors and all the kind of uh, extras that they had... Um, which some of which were actors and some of which were just random ass people. Um, all those people, I thought their performances were good because they really did seem like real people. You yeah. know what I mean? They didn't yeah. seem to me like they were acting over much. Maybe that's just me, but none of them really seemed like they were acting uh, yeah. to any great degree. Like nothing stood out to me as, Oh, that seems fake or whatever. It just, it didn't really, yeah, you could say that she was overreacting, but that it, but it never struck me as, like, not <coughs> genuine. I mean, you know what I mean? That just struck me as maybe she just, like, is prone to freaking out and shit like that. Because what they did, they shot this in eight days, right? They gave, I think, the ad that they were, uh, that the actors answered. They basically said, we want a bunch of actors with improvisational skills. And they said, you guys are going to go out in the woods and, you know, we're going to do this uh, horror movie. So the screenplay, the original screenplay, was only 35 pages. Uh, they pretty much said, we're just going to get some actors that know what they're doing. We're going to send them out in the woods. And they actually did go camp in the woods. Um, and then they would leave messages for them, like where, like, go find a message at this place, like with the GPS. This is where your character is at today. Uh, you know, this is what we have to get accomplished today. Go. Um, so the actors shot everything themselves. Heather had to learn how to use a camera. Well, the other guy, Mike, already knew how to use one, which was one of the reasons that he got hired. And they, so they basically just kind of let him go. And then the filmmakers, in the middle of the night, while the actors were sleeping, would sneak around their tent, hit their tent with sticks, leave shit out. So the actors didn't know what was going to happen. They didn't know... Like, when they woke up in the morning and came out of their tent, they weren't entirely sure what was going to be there, uh, which I think, like, was pretty effective because the actors, and sometimes, like, the filmmakers would, like, take some of their food. They would do shit like that. Like, they just kept fucking with them because they were trying to, like, push them to react in the way that they would react if this was real footage. Uh, so I think that actually went a long way. Like I said... I, I was really curious to see this again because I remembered it being good. Like, I'm not... Because I know that there's kind of two camps on this. Like, some people are, like, really, really into this movie. Like, I've seen, um, you know, a lot of horror fans that really like it. And then some are just like, ah, eh, it's not scary. But it I will say that it was scarier in context. It was scarier at the time. It's probably been pretty good. Um, just because yeah. of that ambiguity. Yeah. And you hadn't really seen... There had been found footage movies before but not one done to this uh, kind of degree where there was this whole like lore around it that was out like all this supplemental material that was outside of it, like a website and a documentary and yeah. all this other stuff. And this whole thing about, oh, these people are actually missing and you couldn't really find out about that. So I think the ambiguity about it made it much creepier. And I will say too that seeing it in the theater was scarier as yeah. well because you got it was like a much more sensory experience. Had I seen all the supplemental stuff online back then, I probably would have gone and seen the movie. But I uh, you know, I just kinda heard about it and I remember kinda tisk tisking it when it first was like, ah, oh, no no way. Yeah, but Michelle was into it. She was ready to see it. I laughed she saw it because you didn't see it, she loved it. And I was like I mean no. everybody saw it back like, then. Nah. Holy crap. 
I was too, you know, I, at the at the time, I think I was might have been hurting for money, and we had to go to the club. It was, you know, what I mean? it was just that simple. Yeah, that kind of shit, you know. Now I might have seen it later because I kind of feel like. Was something I would do because I was broke ass back then too. Well, yeah. I'm still broke ass, but I was broke yeah. ass back then too. Yeah, you um, you're as broke as we used to. Be. Well, no, but um, but yeah. So what I would do, I I could not I could not afford to go see movies yeah. like the first run. So I had to wait like a few weeks until it came to the dollar theater. Yeah, and then I would go see it in the dollar theater <laughs> if I wanted to see it. So I saw pretty much everything like four weeks after it came out. Uh, and this might have been, although I might have actually paid to see this, or somebody took me to see it, I can't really remember, but I did know I saw this in the theater, and I actually enjoyed it quite a bit. I'm a big fan in horror, uh, generally, if it's done right, uh, that not showing shit is a lot of times, if you know what you're doing, creepier than showing shit, because I kind of feel like what happened subsequently with the found footage genre, which is one reason I'm not a big fan of it, is because now that there's all these found footage movies, it really strains your credulity. Why are these people still filming this? Why are they, you know, why yeah. is this still going on? And they've taken it over the top to a point where now even found footage movies still have to have like scary ghosts popping up in your face and shit like that, like a more traditional horror they movie. They have to have edits. Right. And whereas this one did not have that, this yeah. one really did have this gritty sense of this is some actual amateur footage that's just kind of slapdash together. And, you know, and they didn't really see anything supernatural. Uh, they just saw stuff that was, like, suggestive, you know what yeah. I mean? Like the creepy shit in the woods, which, if that really happened to you, would be scary as shit. Wouldn't surprise me. I, you might want to check the dates. It wouldn't surprise me if Blair Witch Project actually gave birth to stuff like Taps and Ghost Hunters and all that. Probably got it from that. You know, um, there had... Well, you those. know what? There was some, like, reality TV on in the 90s, but I, it was pretty much, like, MTV's The Real World. I think yeah. that had started in maybe the mid-90s or yeah. the late 90s. Yeah, no, well, that's what I'm saying. Somewhere that's, around there. I'm thinking all that fucking Taps, Ghost Hunters, was probably a response to actually the things like things like this like Blair Witch Project it might have been they're, they're actually going out trying to because I'm watching this in certain parts that are kind of like something you'd see off of fucking a Ghost Hunters Ghost Hunters show it is or, very much like or, that or watching like it now or something kind of like that so it wouldn't surprise me if, if this inspired those television series it might have like I said I'd have to look it up because I can't remember when that started although and paranormal, one of them was called Paranormal State, which had this dude. Oh, I was, remember that one. Yeah, and it kind of had an underlying kind of theme behind it, and it tried to bring in kind of like a lore, kind of like kind of like the way. But it was supposedly reality, it was you know reality thing, you know, fucking like taps. Even though like the dude who was fucking the star of the show was just like a fucking total fucking scammer, ran off with a bunch of people's money and just quit the show, that type of deal. Um, but yeah, he still it, has a following somehow. But well, you know, <laughs> honestly, nowadays you, stole the show. you can kind of do anything nowadays, yeah. and some people and, still like. Yeah, and evidently think there were times awesome. online where he just came out and just came out and right said, came right out and said that that whole fucking show was a scam and yeah. fraudulent. You know, that you know he didn't see anything paranormal. I mean, the difference between this though is that I mean, if you looked hard enough, you could discover that this was an actual like a fake movie. They weren't yeah. trying to. They were trying to portray it as real for term, you know, for uh, purposes of like viral marketing, which worked gangbusters. Yeah. But they weren't. I don't think they were necessarily trying to deceive anybody in that. I don't know. When you're talking about an ARG, it's kind of like a fine line because yeah. you do want people to think it's real, but nowadays. You know, in our post creepy pasta era and all that other kind of stuff, I think people know that it's not real, yeah. but to enjoy it, you just pretend that you think it's real. You yeah, know what I mean? And, There's that kind of thing. And the reason why this is called the Blair Witch is because of the Bell Witch. The Bell Witch was a book, kind of like this movie. It was like an ARG. That it, that book claimed to be old. It was pretty old, but not as old. I, I um, it's claiming to be uh, it's very early 1800s i think is when the case is supposed to be i mean was it andrew jackson supposedly shows up at the scene and yeah deals with the fucking poltergeist and specialists deal with the poltergeist but i don't think that book was written in the 1800s somebody else came i think somebody did an investigation and tried to figure it was more like early 1900s 
like I think it was 19. Uh, yeah, I thought it was the yeah, I thought it was the 20s or the 30s or something. Yeah, and they were trying to make it seem like it seem was much like older. It was an old so like I said, the whole so This has been going on for a long yeah, time. Yeah, and uh, and honestly, um when you look up like found footage like the Wikipedia page, it points out and I think I maybe pointed this out at some point in the past on one of our shows is that you could argue that the epistolary novel like Dracula or something like that is kind of a similar similar deal. idea yeah. because they're trying to like they're doing newspaper reports and letters yeah. and stuff like that so they're trying to have this veneer of verisimilitude so it's like this is a real thing that happened and give it some realism so it's not like a crazy new idea no and the bell witch the bell witch book one of the things that's like a giveaway is it claims that andrew jackson shows up to the scene on a certain date the date is given well evidently he had a speech before congress on that day back in washington dc fucking weeks away you know it took a long time to travel back then yeah it was like you know He'd have to, yeah. <laughs> it'd be like a week fucking travel. Yeah, so we've, uh, we did a show about where the Bell he Witch, was. He couldn't have been there. Yeah. Because there are some people that still believe that book. Kind of like Eaters of the De- it was Eaters of the Dead, which is a good book. They, they made that 13th Warrior movie based on it. Yeah. Eaters of the Dead. That was another one my dad believed. He believed that that was actually, I read the book and I bought, I, I bought into it. I didn't realize that that was uh, fictionalized history. Yeah, and and yeah. as I said, so so people kind of feel like nowadays, it's been going on for a long time. but yeah, it's been going on like forever. Uh, there's always been entertainment that was trying to make you believe that it was real. Yeah, um, you know, and so it's not a new phenomenon. No. I will say though that, and I know because somebody's gonna comment. And I think I brought this up before. The Blair Witch Project was not the first found footage movie. No. Uh, the first found footage movie, uh, pretty much universally, was uh, Regera Diodato's Cannibal Holocaust from 1980, uh, which was kind of similar to this, actually. It was like a film crew, and they disappeared, and you know they found their footage later, and they looks like they get That's eaten by cannibals. That's when they were killing the animals, right? Yes. Yeah, I couldn't stand that movie. As soon as that dude fucking stuck that stick to that Karamati, Karawati thing. What do you call that thing? Karamundi? A water, what, Kawada Monday? Kawada Monday. That's what, yeah. I don't know what kind of animal that is. Possum. All right. He fucking shoved that thing through that possum and that pot. And I, and I was like, nope, nope, no, nope, Uncool. I yeah, a lot of people. Well, there is a there is off. a cut of it uh, yeah. that has all the animal cruelty taken yeah. out. Because a lot of people are like, because that's real. Yeah. It's like, it's one thing to like torture totally people. It was yeah. Yeah, I mean, on, you know, but if, if it had been fake, I don't think anybody would have cared. Yeah. But yeah, so Cannibal Holocaust, generally considered the first found footage movie. Interestingly... There was actually another found footage movie, but it was more like a mockumentary, that actually came out a year before The Blair Witch Project. It's called The Last Broadcast. It came out in 1998. And interestingly, it kind of has the same thing, except it uses a real myth, uh, the Jersey Devil. And it's kind of about, like, guys that go off in the woods looking for the Jersey Devil, like, to make a mockumentary, and then one of them, like, murders the other ones or whatever, and then they find their footage later on. Now, there was, interestingly, uh, a rumor going around after the Blair Witch came out and was, like, this massive success that the guys that made the last broadcast were pissed and were going to sue because they're like, hey, that was, like, our idea. But... Uh, so that was like a big rumor but then the guys were like no man it's just like we're happy that Blair Witch got really big and it's like now that Blair Witch got really big maybe people will check out our movie because everybody will say hey it was another found footage movie that came out a year before the Blair Witch Project I actually haven't seen uh, the last broadcast but it's been on my list for a long time because I'm kind of curious but yeah so I feel like the Blair Witch Project coming out in 1999 um, yes, it, some people say, well, oh, it kicked off the found footage thing, which it kind of did, but I kind of feel like the real big, like, explosion in found footage movies probably didn't happen until Paranormal Activity came out, which was, what, 2007, 2009, something like that. And, uh, that was actually, that made pretty much all the money, too, on, like, a really low budget, and that was kind of like... Again, it was good at suspending disbelief because it was people who had been experiencing paranormal activity in their house, just like a regular couple, and they set up cameras all over their house like to catch the activity. Um, so there was a reason people were filming. You know, it wasn't anything too crazy, and nothing real over the top happened. Uh, Paranormal Activity, the first one, is actually pretty good. But again, like Blair Witch, nothing much really happens. But in a way, I kind of like that better. Because when you go too far, especially when you're doing found footage, which like I said, you know, people need to suspend their disbelief. When you're doing found footage and then you have like every five seconds, like I said, some big like ghost or monster or something like that, like jumping out at people, 
you know, it, it doesn't work out as good. Uh, it I Honestly, in a lot of times, uh, some found footage movies that I've seen probably didn't even need to be found footage. They could have just made it like a regular narrative film and it would have been fine. Um, but so I will give the Blair Witch Project that and Paranormal Activity is that they actually maintained their believability throughout. There was a reason why shit was filmed. Nothing too crazy happened. So there was a thing where you could conceivably like think that it was still real which to me makes it a little bit creepier than something that has all this unbelievable horror movie shit going on it you know what i mean so but yeah i i do kind of feel like there were found footage movies after blair witch but i kind of feel like most of the ones that people talk about nowadays like wreck and all that kind of and cloverfield and all that kind of stuff that came out after paranormal activity made a bajillion dollars now i will uh, i will note too that Blair Witch Project had a sequel that came out in 2000, which was not found footage, and it was called Book of Shadows, Blair Witch 2. Pretty much everybody hated it. I didn't mind it. Um, I thought it was okay. I haven't seen it in a long time, so it might suck a lot worse than I'm remembering. Uh, it wasn't found footage, and actually it did something kind of interesting in the sense that it was almost, it didn't go meta necessarily, but they were kind of talking about uh it, the theme of it was kind of like the blurring of uh you know video with reality type of thing so i think they did a pretty okay job with that like i said i haven't seen it in a long time i remember it being all right uh, a lot of people hated it though and then in 2016 adam wingard did essentially a sequel to the blair witch project which was good, just called blair witch and has to do with the heather's brother going and looking for her. Now, I haven't seen that one either, although that one, I like Adam Wingard, don't get me wrong, but uh, that one hasn't got too great a reviews either, although I will probably get around to seeing it just because I'm curious. But honestly, I just don't think that something like this could be ever replicated. Nope, it was a thing of its time. It was definitely a thing of its time, and that's and there's nothing wrong with that. Um, a lot of movies are like that, and if you can't put yourself back in the mindset of what was going on in the cultural context at that time, yep. you're not going to find it scary. But I am kind of curious to know if people that are, you know, that weren't even born when Blair Witch Project came out, like, do they find it scary nowadays? I guess it depends, because some people find different things scary. It had to do with the state of the technology at the time, yeah. the way c culture was. Um, it was the beginning of the internet era. The internet was the Wild West. It was a lot better and better in certain ways. Uh, today, everything's on the internet. It's kind of civilized and, and advanced. Back in these days, the, the, the internet was still kind of mysterious. Uh, it was like the Wild West. You never could tell what you'd see on, on there. Um, I mean, you could fucking go find some serial killer shit happening on there, you know, like snuff flicks and stuff. Stuff that come from Eastern Europe, soldiers killing each other and execution videos. Places it, They had them all in places like Gore Gallery. And it was had a real subversive tone to, to, to the Internet. Uh, you, it, was, it was a time in which you could buy drugs over the Internet. That, that, that's how that's how wild it was um and then out of nowhere comes this story of this weird ghost Blair Witch project thing and evidently they had little documentaries you could watch and the internet had a creepy tone to it back then so that really would have built up the, the story and and in those days the right you know, people in their 20s, early 20s would be talking about this. And people in their teens would be talking about it, you know, at Denny's. <laughs> I mean, shit. it was a it big like that, deal. You know? Everybody saw so, this shit. Everybody. Yeah. yeah, there wasn't as much competition for ideas because there wasn't as much stuff on the Internet back then. So it was easy to channel a large crowd into one single phenomenon for a while. In other words, go viral. It could go viral, but nowhere near like viral today. It would something going viral would take longer and it would involve it would still involve certain subcultures of people like the kids that hung out at Denny's you know uh, it's just so I think you had to be there at that time yeah with the old internet and see what they were seeing and it would juice you up to see this movie and then you see the movie and then you'd either enjoy it or not enjoy it had I been on that train back in those days I probably would have gone to see it probably would have enjoyed it but we just watched it the other day, and it was just like, yeah, okay. 
Yeah. Well, it doesn't resonate the yeah, same. It's not, it's not the same. Uh, because, like you said, back then, there wasn't as much competition yeah. for eyeballs on the internet, so right. it was easier for everybody to be talking about it. They got in, like I said, I don't think they meant to do this at all, but they got in exactly at the right time yeah. for this to just explode. Right. And so they kind of lucked out with the technology, with the way the culture was at the time. Way, the way me, marketing was at the time. I remember back in those days, everybody asking me, had I seen it? And I was yeah. getting pissed to saying no. <laughs> no. And, and it was always like the kids that were young. Did you see Blair Witch Project? You know, like 17, 18. Did you see it? No, I didn't see it, man. You know, I'm fucking 24. I'm grown. You know, that kind of shit. <laughs> I'm 25. Grown. I'm grown. I'm <laughs> that, is, that was kind of the way it was. Well, you know, I, I don't see that it. shit, man. Fuck that shit. I'm grown. I'm <laughs> Did you see it? Because you're a pussy. You know, that just, you know, just... That sounds like some dumb shit you would say. (laughs) But no, um, I I just kind of missed it. I I don't, I wasn't, you had to get on the train early. You had to be waiting for that. Yeah, and it's not only that, but it's just kind of like, and we've talked about this before with other types of horror movies where... You know, one, if you didn't see it at the time, like some, like The Exorcist yeah. or something like that, if you didn't see it at the time or with its cultural context, maybe The Exorcist is a bad example because that's like still a good movie. But there's movies nowadays that were like the first of their kind. And I know this wasn't the first of its kind. It was like the third, but whatever. It was the first one to kind of get really, really popular. Um, you they know, just movies. Saw it. This is the first one they saw. Yeah, movies that were kind of the first of their kind, or were real, you know, on the vanguard or whatever. And then subsequently, so many other ones have been made. Like I said, forty bajillion found footage movies have come out since then, and I feel like younger horror fans have already seen all of those. So going back and seeing this one, it's just going to seem like a big fat nothing because it's like, well, nothing happens. There's no monsters. There's no. It's just people lost in the woods screaming and like some noises outside a tent and shit like that. Yeah. But, you know, which I get that uh, because found footage has gotten so ubiquitous and has gotten a lot more like a regular movie nowadays and everybody's seen it. Everybody knows the tropes. Back then, as I said, it's the same reason why kids in the 70s probably thought In Search Of was creepy, which we did. Yeah. And the movie makers in this who are younger than us, but they uh, were still really into those kind of shows and they thought they were creepy. And the reason they were creepy is because you weren't really sure if the shit was real or not. Uh, and it wasn't, you know, it, music. yeah, it was like creepy music. It was, and it was Spot. easy to like suspend. Yeah. It was easy Spot. to suspend yeah. your disbelief because nothing super crazy was happening. Yeah. Uh, it was subtle. And so you were just kind of like, Oh man, is like, is this supernatural? True. Is yeah. this a serial killer? Is this what's going on? You know what is I mean? That's true. Does that mean that this and this could happen? You know? Right. So I do kind of feel like as a cultural artifact, I think it's really like, particularly in the horror genre, it's a really, really important film. Um, and it's a genius piece of marketing, just the way they went about it. They were right at the exact right place at the exact right time and, you know, made had the technology zillions of dollars. It. Yeah. Um, but, you know, you wouldn't be able to replicate that. You wouldn't be able to do it again. Nowadays, yeah, you have to do something different. A mainstream Hollywood studio of that era would have never thought to market it the way that these guys did. That's true. Online. Yeah. Because yeah. that would have been like something that little low budget. Films. Well, yeah, that's it's exactly what they did. Was and honestly, yeah. they did internet, like internet wasn't. Respected. They did some word of mouth shit too. Like when yeah. they went to Sundance, they had a whole bunch of those missing posters printed up and gave them out to people at Sundance. Like these were real people that were yeah. missing. And it's like, hey, we we have this documentary that we made about these people yeah. and they went missing and all this other stuff. So there was really a lot of hype about it beforehand. And like I said, that was all down to their really genius like marketing plan. Yeah, which kind of goes back to the circus and carnivals. Yeah. It's really all it is. Yeah. And like I said, it's yeah. just, I'm I'm not sure how calculated they were or if this was just, um, you know, something that occurred to them and they didn't really think about how revolutionary it was going to be. Um, they didn't seem to. They just seemed like two regular, like, young film student guys. I think they just went for the cheaper alternatives and it worked. And it worked. Yeah. yeah. And like I said, you can't do, you couldn't be, you wouldn't be able to do that anymore. No. Like I said, everybody does ARGs nowadays. Yeah. Um, and everybody's kind of like savvy to the tropes. And... Modern internet would have fucking pulled the rug out from underneath this because it would have gotten out and leaked to what it was. Yeah. And just, and, 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 and spoiled the, the buzz. I mean, back in the old days, the IMDb, because we did have IMDb in 1999, the IMDb page for the Blair Witch Project movie, all the actors said uh, missing or presumed dead yeah, next we, to their names for like a year. Yeah. And it, it, another, another, this had also been done, you know, fucking Orson Welles did it with War of the Worlds, his radio broadcast. That was another one where 
people who knew the deal knew that that was just a, a radio show about a book, but other people who kind of came into it because it sounded like a real news broadcast or kind of like a news broadcast, they bought into it. They thought it was the a Martian invasion of the Earth. Yeah, like I you said, know, so that's kind of like an early example of quote-unquote found footage as well. Found if footage, you didn't yeah. know that that was a story or like a teleplay, yeah. then they were trying to make it sound like a real thing. So it's yeah. not a new phenomenon. No. It's just kind of like the format or the platform that changes. It's the same trick. They just play it different ways. Right. So, yeah. So it's not like obviously these two guys weren't the first ones to think of let's yeah. make something that looks like a real thing. Yeah. Not even in film, but in other mediums, it's, you know, they've been doing it for that. Nowadays, what they're doing is that you make a damn video of put the cat in danger and then rescue the cat and then get all the likes and all the money. They're doing that <laughs> shit now. I can't stand that. That's, yeah, you that's, seen that? That's terrible. Yeah. yeah. Throw the cat in the mud pile and fuck so it's stuck and then fucking film it and have your buddy film you saving the cat oh my god what a wonderful person and it's obviously a setup i can't believe that and they're on fucking facebook i cannot believe people don't report those fucking videos or don't see them for what they are honestly they're i don't them. even like do you remember there was like a few years back there was a trend i don't even like this and this is pretty mild in yeah. comparison um, where people would be like, hey, look how funny it is that cats are apparently scared of cucumbers because they look like yeah, snakes or something. Let's on. put the cucumber in this, and then the yeah, cat will freak out. I'm like, yeah. please don't yeah. scare your cat. Yeah. Please don't traumatize your cat for a the cucumber. sake of a video. Yeah. Please don't do that. It's like, that's <laughs> terrible. Yeah. It's just like, look, it's... I've scared Pookie accidentally lots of times. You know, like I'll kind of sneak up on her and she'll be like, what? You know what I mean? Yeah. But it's like, don't do it on purpose just yeah. so you can get like a funny video. That's mean. Yeah. Poor kitty. So that's all I got to say about Blair Witch. Yeah. So uh, let us know your thoughts about Blair Witch in the comments. I know, like I said, this one is kind of, uh, I, don't, I don't I don't know if I'd call it divisive, but I know some people are just like, ah, nothing happens. It's, it's so kind of entertaining. You know it I mean? is. I, I actually was really interested right. watching it again, but yeah. I can see how if... You know, without you know, without the cultural context, without the time yeah, period that it came out, um, and since there have been so many found footage movies since then, it doesn't have the same impact or it doesn't yeah. have the same effect nowadays that it did back then. I lived through that time, and now I understand why people were talking about it. Yeah, I understand what, why why they like they liked it. I see the trick that it pulled. Well, it, it doesn't did... quite do that anymore. It, that doesn't work. It does come across as real footage, so I yeah. will give it that. So yeah. um, I think that really works in its favor. Yeah. But uh, yeah. All right. So that'll do it for this movie retrospective. We'll see you guys on the next one. Bye.